One of my subscribers sent me a message asking me to cover Trump's future meeting with North Korea. So today we're talking about North Korea, known most kindly as the second best Korea, and their meeting with Donald Trump, as reported by Fox News and NBC, and of course, us. So yes, North Korea might be getting a visit from Donald Trump, which might actually give them a refreshing sense of honesty and modesty from a leader, considering he's up against a man who considers himself to be divine, has found cures to AIDS and cancer, oh, and Donald, if you want to invite him golfing, maybe don't, because did you know that in the first time he ever played golf, he got 11 holes in one? God, I love that. You know the guy writing that must have been thinking, 18 holes in one? Now we have to make it realistic. 17? That just looks like we took one away. Nah, let's go with 11. Anyways, Trump's willingness to meet with him was announced a few days ago by his State Department spokesman. We are not going to schedule talks about talks or any kind of chat or anything like that um, at this point. All right, so not her. Who was it then? The Donald himself speaking out to the nation to reassure us about this daring new diplomatic strategy? Well, no. Turns out hours after the State Department spokesman said no meetings were being discussed, we learned from... The announcement came Thursday night, not from the press secretary or the president himself, but from a South Korean official outside the White House. He expressed his eagerness to meet President Trump as soon as possible. President Trump appreciated the briefing and said he would meet Kim Jong-un by May. Wow, if Sarah Huckabee Sanders quits, I recommend you hire this guy. He seems to know what he's talking about. So let's get right into it with Fox, because I want to hear how great everything is. We know he likes to meet with leaders, particularly as competitors, and kind of size them up. It's kind of a Trumpian thing he does. We also know he's actually really good at these meetings. All right, so I'm not sure if he's actually good at meeting with foreign leaders. I mean, if the bar is at throwing up on the Prime Minister of Japan during a live broadcast, he's our next Kissinger. And that was the Bush we considered to be good at foreign policy. Eh, Japan's forgiven us for worse. So how is President Trump in meeting other leaders? Well, it depends on who, because here he is with Netanyahu doing a handshake that would make Jeff Sessions think about arresting him for a split second. That said, if after a meeting with Netanyahu, you can immediately transition to a meeting with Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of Palestine, and if both of them claim it was a good and productive meeting, you're clearly doing something right. Now, by all accounts, it seems like Trump might actually be pretty good at meeting leaders. Although, it might be more effective if he didn't have a tendency to insult them as soon as they left the room. Besides shaking people's hand like he's worried they'll float away if he lets go, it seems as though meeting with him is actually a pretty pleasant experience. Heck, he's so good at meeting foreign leaders, he actually got further with Great Britain's Theresa May than he did with his own wife. Anyways, the Fox News anchor kept going. What this shows is what a lot of us have been saying all along. This, this was not a crisis spinning out of control. The United States wasn't getting ready to preemptively attack North Korea. That maximum pressure, it was the right policy and the, and the president was right to stick with it. So what is maximum pressure? It sounds too awesome to be a political phrase. But I stand corrected because South Korea, Japan and America are putting maximum pressure on North Korea which is basically just stronger sanctions. But at this point, after 17 years of increasingly progressive sanctions, it's starting to feel about as effective as robbing a homeless man. Give me all your pennies! In the most recent round of sanctions, which Trump hailed as the heaviest sanctions ever imposed by our country before, which, okay, found 27 entities and 28 vessels that were found to be illegally transporting items from North Korea and said we're not doing business with them, in an equivalent of saying the US government is no longer going to work with smugglers moving illegal contraband. Glad we got that one cleared up. We're running out of things to not buy. That said, Fox News did differentiate Trump from other presidents in a way that is not very encouraging. This is intractable. Trump 
I mean, it's madman theory. I mean, if I'm a madman, you don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, maybe it is the madman theory. Now, this is just as funny as it is true. We really do have the advantage of a president who truly is unpredictable. And we finally have a guy who would go to war over an unsolicited Facebook poke. So we stared at Kim and he blinked. And while some might see this as just him wanting to talk to Trump, something that North Korea has wanted to do ever since Clinton, he might be, at least in rhetoric, giving something up. So let's go back to the South Korean on the cutting edge of US policy. North Korea will refrain from any further nuclear or missile tests. He understands that the routine joint military exercises between the Republic of Korea and the United States must continue. Now, that might not sound like much, but accepting those military tests is huge. This is no exaggeration, the US and South Korea practicing different methods for invading and stabilizing North Korea. Talk about a sort of Damocles. So now it's time to look at the liberals who seem to be brushing up on their North Korean for the imminent invasion. You might imagine another president in this circumstance. Kim Jong-un makes a, makes a request. Do you want to meet? You might, you might think like another president in this circumstance, you can imagine a president asking himself or herself. Why has no other American president ever agreed to do this? Why has no sitting American president ever met with a leader from North Korea? Why has that never happened in all the decades North Korea has existed as a nation? Why, why hasn't any other president ever done? Should I take that to mean that this might be a particularly risky or even an unwise move? Some of you might not believe me, but that was actually her leading argument for why this is bad. Now, I was explaining why leaders shouldn't defect from the norms today to a slave before paying my taxes to Great Britain and wishing that someone would just do something to give me basic health care. Now, I hear some of you saying, Stephen, that's not why this is a stupid thing to say. It's stupid because, according to the Associated Press, Former President Bill Clinton met Tuesday with North Korean leader Kim Jong-il. The leaders met on the first day of Clinton's surprise visit to Pyongyang. First off, I feel like Bill Clinton is the only guy who could pull off a surprise visit to Pyongyang. Oh hey Kim, how's it going? Let's just not inhale some marijuana. Because that's one of the few things that's legal in North Korea. As if they need a weed that makes you hungrier. The report went on to say, Clinton is the second former president to visit North Korea. Former President Jimmy Carter headed to the North in 1994, also in an effort to ease nuclear tensions. Now, that may be former presidents, but Clinton was planning on traveling to North Korea in 2000, until a constitutional crisis fell into his lap, and he had to stay in the country. And then there was this moment that Fox News used to hate but loves now, where, when asked about whether he'd meet with leaders from Syria, Iraq, and North Korea, Obama said, I would. Uh, and the reason is this, that the notion that somehow not talking to countries uh, is punishment to them, uh, which has been the guiding uh, diplomatic principle of this administration, is ridiculous. That said, his administration ended up using a strategy called strategic patience, which was based on continuing to do the economic and diplomatic sanctions with the potential to talk later. In practice, though, we largely just ignored them and hoped nothing too big exploded. She went on to talk about what a mess everything had been in handling this. The State Department spokesperson today said, we are not scheduling talks about talks. None of that is happening anytime soon. Um, also, the somewhat unusual rollout with having South Korean officials announce it. And we also had a senior administration official say, after we had the announcement from the South Koreans, was that they're, they're, the U.S. is not even talking about negotiations at this point. I'm just starting to get the feeling that the South Koreans just wanted Trump to meet Kim Jong-un, so they announced it in front of the White House, and everyone in the administration just kind of assumed it was someone else's idea. So yes, it was a sloppy rollout, but I would like to hear some actual critiques of substance. Well, it's actually interesting because her guests seemed somewhat optimistic about this announcement. What was particularly interesting to me out of the announcement from the White House today by the South Koreans again was that North Korea would not only, according to this agreement, would not only refrain from further nuclear or missile tests, 
but they understand that routine joint military exercises between the United States and South Korea would have to continue. That is a, a huge departure from what we've heard from North Korea in the past. That is a radical departure. In fact, these talks are going to take place halfway through a two-month South Korean-American joint military training procedure. And I can't emphasize enough how unsettling that must be to the North. That would be like if the apartment next to me was regularly coordinating with the NYPD to kill me and take my apartment, which is rent controlled, so this is a plausible scenario. I would want the biggest weapon I could get my hands on too, which is why you hear large scale US South Korean military exercises, which of course for years has been what the North Korean regime has complained about, has said that these military exercises are provocative, hmm. and they use that as an excuse for more missile and ballistic, ballistic missile and even nuclear testing. That is one heck of a decent excuse though, especially when you factor in that Nixon drunkenly ordered a nuclear strike against North Korea and we almost nuked them during the height of the Korean War. So the last major point a lot of liberal media is highlighting is... If we have a picture of Kim Jong-un and President Trump standing next to one another, this actually achieves one of Kim Jong-un's long-standing and his father's goal, mm -hmm. which is to elevate North Korea. It's to make them be seen as a major world power. And a picture of North Korea with Trump will all of a sudden get them the respect of the world. Because the North Korean brand? Not at all tarnished. This is like worrying that people finding out that Charles Manson spent a summer with the Beach Boys might lead them to think he's a chill dude. I think having a GDP of about $12.38 billion in a starving country says a lot more than a Trump selfie. So briefly, let's talk about the goals of both sides because everyone's stated objective is denuclearization, which sounds great, although it's like two people entering into a death match with the shared goal of survival. You see, while the US is intent on North Korea giving up their nuclear ambitions, which they've foregone food for 20 years to build up, but who knows, maybe it'll be worth it to hug Trump. North Korea is more focused on US weapons that could be used against them, which, alright North Korea, good luck with that one. The only way you're getting this administration to destroy nuclear weapons is if we're blowing them up over Pyongyang. Now this leads us to a larger problem. We just don't have the right position staff to handle this. Not only do we not have an ambassador to South Korea, we don't have people in key arms reductions posts in the government that would be in charge of monitoring this. If North Korea did give up its nuclear weapons, it would be really hard right now for us to track it. So the main thing I take away from all of this is, we have two men meeting with about as much combined respect for international agreements as a teenager who just found Pirate Bay has for copyright protections. Between wanting to break the NAFTA and Iran deals for us, and North Korea breaking every nuclear deal it's ever entered, the stakes seem high, but I'm not sure I would recommend investing in a fallout shelter over this one. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, speaking of nuclear threats and pressing the red button, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button to turn it gray. Don't forget to like below, and as always, thank you for watching.